um, our topic is on making the most of your geographic preference bidding. And Mark Bordeaux and Julie Rahway, who are from the Room Tioga BOCES, are going to be uh, presenting today. So we thank you very much for offering to present Mark and Julie, and I'll let you introduce yourselves. And like I said, um, you know, don't be shy in your introduction. You guys are a great resource. So um, you can take it away, Mark. Thank you, Diane. Oh, uh, good. Oh, yep, go, go ahead, Julie. Ahead, well, um, I was just going to, Mark, go ahead and introduce yourself and then we'll get started. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Mark Bordeaux and I'm, I'm thrilled to be here today. I'm the Senior Director of Food Services for Broom Tiger Boses and the immediate past president of the New York School Nutrition Association. I've been a, a school director for 30 and a half years now. Uh, I will be retiring end of June. Um, it's been an amazing career. Uh, the most rewarding thing as far as a career I could ever think of and imagine. So it's been a great ride. Uh, looking forward to what's next, but uh, I am thrilled to be here with Julie today to uh, talk about uh, geographic preference bidding. Thanks, Mark. Um, I'm Julie Rahway. I am the registered dietitian for Broom Tiger I have been in school nutrition 12 years. Uh, very sad to see Mark retiring, but happy for him. So it'll Definitely be a change, but good. We'll keep moving forward, um, especially with our farm to school efforts. So I'm going to dive right in today um, and share some information about our geographic preference bid and kind of our farm to school process with it. Mark, if you can go to the next slide, that would be great. Um, a little background on our program. So we are part of Broom Tiger Boses, and we have trademarked our school nutrition program, which is called Rock On Cafe. Uh, we do breakfast, breakfast in the classroom, lunch, summer meals, after school snack. Uh, we do have a dinner program and a fresh fruit and vegetable snack program. So we cover 15 school districts in the Binghamton area, and we have about over 400 staff and 65 kitchens. Uh, we're serving about Currently right now, 20,000 lunches and 12,500 breakfasts a day with 63% um, uh, students qualifying for free and reduced meals. As most everybody knows this year, all students can eat for free, which is great for the programs. Um, so just this, just a little bit of background information, our group with our, we all talk about New York Thursdays later, but that's a picture of our managers and directors with all their uh, New York Thursday t-shirts on. We really promote that program. And I would encourage everyone to check out our website. We do have information on there about our farm to school program. Yeah. Next slide, please. Uh, throughout the presentation, there's gonna be quite a bit of information. And a lot of this um, came from the USDA Procuring Local Foods Guide and also the Ag and Markets Local Food into New York State Schools. So just encouraging everybody to check out these resources and just wanted to reference these as we go throughout the presentation. Next slide, please. So today, as we talked about, we're going to be focusing on, on geographic preference bidding. Now, when you want to purchase local foods or foods from New York State, there's, there's many ways you can do it. Uh, we're going to be talking mainly about geographic preference bidding today. And it's designed specifically to buy locally unprocessed or extremely minimally processed foods. Uh, you know, if it's, if it's picked off the vine locally, you can, you can uh, purchase it uh, through a geographic preference bid. If there's, if there's milling process with no ingredients added, uh, you can also buy it uh, locally through a geographic preference bid. It's really helpful because you can narrow down um, to products and areas of where you want to find local. And this gives you the authority to define what does local mean to you. Now, you can't say local as the farmer next door or the farmer on uh, Hill Road in the town of Fenton or anything like that, you have to give it a, a, a range of an area. But this helps you clarify and understand what your local area is and you define local again. So when we talk about minimally processed, this is a great slide that really talks about what minimally processed is and what local is. So again, you define what local is. So you can define 150 mile radius. You can define the county of Saratoga, you can define it as New York State, uh, you can define what you mean by local. And these are the items that you can include on there. So you include frozen, sliced, washed, packaged, dried, and pasteurized. 
or has been cooked, heated, canned, pickled, or items have been added to it. For example, uh, you can do a geographic preference bid for unflavored milk. But when it comes to chocolate milk or strawberry milk, then you have to do a different bid. That cannot be part of your geographic preference bid because there's a, a, a process to it where they've added flavoring. Um, and, this, and the geographic preference bid applies to products, not vendors. So it's important to realize that, that you're, you're, you're bidding products, not specifically for a vendor, but for the product. So it can't be for Farmer Joe or Farmer Sam. It's got to be for the product specifically. And here's just a great example of some items that are considered uh, items that you can put on your bid. You know, fruits, you know, all sorts of fruits are sliced, diced, uh, frozen, um, but canned. You cannot count canned on your geographic preference bids. Same with the vegetables, meats. You can, you can bid all sorts of meats on there. But again, if uh, you can do a, a, a ground beef, for example, but if there's seasoning and different additives to that ground beef, it now can no longer be part of the geographic preference bid. Uh, so it's important to realize, again, this is just items that are almost as close to raw state as possible. And it can be fish, poultry, unflavored milk, uh, eggs, and grains. Uh, right now, we, we're receiving some uh, New York oats that we receive from uh, our geographic preference bid. So you, know, you can bid grains as well if you can find New York grains. So these are questions that you would want to consider when uh, putting your bid together is what products do I want to source? You know, do I want to source my, my beef? Do I want to sort just one or two items? What exactly do I want to buy locally? Uh, what is it available? You know, you want to make sure that your, your bid is specific so that you're not asking for watermelons in January that are from New York state. Cause that's not going to happen. Um, what farmers are near you? You know, you could do a request for information from local farmers, say, you know, what items do you have available? What are they available? You know, so you can go out and talk to your local farmers and see what they have available as you create your bid. Uh, you can also include on there as part of your bid stipulation that you'd like to do farm visits, educational activities where maybe the farmer comes to your school. That can all be part of your geographic preference bid. And you can check to see if your local distributor that you buy from do they have local products that you can include uh, specifically on that geographic preference bid so that they can bid those uh, local products only? And what is your vision? You know, are you looking to do just one or two items to get started? Or are you looking to do a complete days of menus like our New York Thursday where everything on the plate is from New York State? You know, do what is comfortable for you. Uh, my recommendation is always to start small and comfortable and work your way up. Because if you start, you know, right off the bat with menuing a whole day's worth of menus, it can be overwhelming if you haven't started yet. So, so get your feet wet, start slow, and work your way up. Um, here's a couple of great resources for you to find out what is available when. You know, Cornell Crop Extension, they are a great resource. They can help you out answering that question. Um, every, every five years, USDA does a census of local agriculture of what farms are available and what they have available as well. Uh, the last census was done in 2017. So in 2022, there'll be a new census that's done. Uh, the National Farm School Network does a national census. Uh, they're another great resource for you to just go to the National Farm School Network website and look for the census. Um, our New York State Agri Markets is a tremendous partner. They have a lot of great resources. They're accessible by phone. Great partnership, great resource. And the New York State Education Department, uh, they also have some stuff on their website that you can go to to find out what's available and when. And we talked about Agri Markets. These two pages are wonderful pages that really break down what's available in New York State and when. So this will help you as you plan your menus. You know, apples, abundant. Apples are available all year long. Same pretty much with onions, herbs, and potatoes. You can pretty much menu those all day long. If you can find a farmer and they have the storage capacity, you can menu local potatoes all year long. Let's so say you want to do corn. You know, your corn is only available for a short time, time window from end of August to maybe early November, depending on your local farmer. So this is a great resource when you're building your menus to kind of take advantage of all the local products that you could uh, use on your menus. And this, this document can be found on 
uh, the Agri Markets website. Uh, great resource for you. So defining local again. So uh, when defining local, and this we mentioned a couple times, but when you define a local, you have to make sure that it is in the United States. It has to be the Buy American provision. So if you live up like in Messina, New York, if you say 150 mile radius, you have to make sure that the Buy American clause is on your bid because Canada is seven miles away from Messina, New York. So Canada would be in that 150 mile radius if you were to bid that. So the Buy American provision is very important. Um, a lot of us are really trying to focus on local and buy more local to qualify for the 30% incentive. So here's the definition of a local product under the 30% incentive uh, guidelines. A food item that's grown, harvested, or produced in New York State. And if it's produced in New York State, 51% of the raw materials have to be grown, harvested, or produced in New York State by volume. So again, for that particular, if it's processed, you cannot include that on the geographic preference bid. So we're gonna be talking about local lot and minimally processed. So when we talk about local, you might not be able to put all items on that geographic preference bid. But I think it's important for you to understand what local is, especially when you're trying for the 30% incentive. Um, so local foods that can be used uh, on your menu. Uh, fruits, vegetables, green, beans, grains, and flour, all these items can be used on local. Uh, processed products, again, you can't bid that on your geographic preference bid. But there's a lot of great processed foods, if you're trying for the, the incentive, that you can use are now available in New York State. You can get French fries. You can get uh, New York State grape juice, uh, New York State applesauce, New York State sliced apples. So if you try for the incentive, those are great process items um, that you can add on your regular bid, but not on the geographic preference bid. But you can buy almost everything local to complete your whole tray uh, for your uh, New York Thursday items or anything else that you want to do locally. And there's many ways you can source local. Uh, obviously, local farmers. Uh, if uh, you're near a lake, there could be a fisherman that has local fish. You know, that might be able to do enough for an elementary school or something or a high school. Um, your local dairy. You know, if you want to bid just local New York State white milk, you can use your dairy. Um, distributors and food hubs. You know, we have a great food hub down here called Headwater. Great local source for us, and they, they get a lot of great New York products. Um, we're getting some uh, great products from our local school gardens here that we're able to use. And that's going to continue to grow over the years where we can get a lot of great local products at our school gardens. Um, and that's becoming very popular, more and more so. So when you're doing your bid and as you're comprising your bid, you have to figure out how long do you want it. And your menu is the, is, should be the main driver of how long the bid is. For us here, our menu for our New York Thursday menu, and that's how we that's how we create our geographic preference bid, is our New York Thursday menu. We do it for a whole year in advance. So we do our bid um, between the November, early December timeframe. And so our menus for the 21-22 school year for New York Thursday was actually completed back in October of 2020. So we completed the menu October 2020. We put the bed, bid together, we mailed it, and we opened it up in early December for a whole year. Now you say, my God, that's awful early to do your bid. This is true, but farmers, they buy a majority of their seeds in December for the next harvest season. So if they know they've won your bid in December, they're gonna buy those seeds at a lower price for themselves. They're gonna be guaranteed this business. So they're gonna go out and buy the seed, plant this food exclusively for you. Or if you open this bid in April or May, they've already bought those seeds and a good chance those seeds are already in the ground. So it's not a guarantee you can have it. So that's why we are bidding in October, November, so they can buy their seeds in, in December and grow them in the early spring um, when they want it. So uh, you know, your bid should cover how long you want it and your menu should drive that. So um, I know Mark touched on some of these, but they're going to lead into our bid process. So six ways to integrate more local into your uh, menus is first identify sources you may already be using that can be easily replaced. So milk, yogurt, apples, um, 
a lot of schools, this is where they start because these are plentiful in New York State and easy to just switch out a product. Um, the other way is to substitute ingredients. Uh, Mark had mentioned this year we started using New York oats. Um, we were already making homemade granola for our parfaits and yogurt meals. So this was again, an easy switch because we are already getting oats in. So now we just get New York oats um, and we're able to count that towards our 30%. Uh, third way is on salad bars. Um, we find that sometimes farmers just have a little bit of product or they're trying to introduce a new product. We're really able to use it on salad bars. Obviously, I don't think any schools are doing many salad bars this year, um, but moving into the future, those will most likely come back. I mean, it's a great way to introduce, uh, especially new vegetables to students. Um, another way is harvest of the month, highlighting you know, a specific vegetable each month or fruit or produce item or um, other New York State product, uh, just really encouraging students to try it and educate them on the product. And then fifth, another way is um, through New York Thursdays, which we started out with five of our districts. We have 15 districts. So we started out with five of them doing New York Thursday once a month, um, a few years ago, just to start small, work out any of the challenges. Um, and then we slowly expanded to all 15 districts. And right now we're doing New York Thursdays um, twice a month in all 15 districts, hoping to expand even further uh, to more New York Thursdays each month uh, next year and into future years. And again, this is a, a day, um, usually Thursday. <laughs> this year we had to shift it a little bit um, depending on the meal service, but Thursday where we try to create meals that are 100% uh, New York State products, which is always a challenge, especially with grain items. Um, I think a lot of schools find that a little bit challenging, but we do the best that we can. Um, and then the last way is just developing new recipes. Um, we tend to look at what Mark showed earlier, like what is available when, and talking to some of our farmers and distributors um, and trying to incorporate uh, new products into the menu, especially if they're very plentiful in New York State, we try to come up, up with recipes that students will enjoy. Next slide, please. Uh, so the five steps in our procurement process are planning, drafting specifications, advertising solicitation, awarding the contract, and then managing the contract. And I'm going to um, go through each of these um, as we talk about how we draft our geo preference bid. Next slide, please. So the first step is obviously planning. Um, you want to have the menu drive what you put on the bid. So for us, like Mark said, we actually did our menu in October this year for all of next year so that we could figure out what products we need and that will drive the bid. Um, again, this has developed over many years. Originally, we didn't really menu plan that far in advance. And then we started menu planning maybe six months in advance. And then once we, we actually had a meetup with the farmers we work with and they share that they buy their seeds at a discounted price in December. Once we heard that, it was like, well, we need to start planning earlier so that we can get the products we want. And also, you know, they can save money on seeds and hopefully pass that cost savings down to us. Um, so again, you know, planning the menus and then um, what we'll need with those menus, how much uh, delivery and pickup. One of the biggest challenges and most everybody knows this who's involved in farm to school is delivery. Uh, especially for us and a lot of other districts, we have you know 65 buildings and not all farmers or food hubs or distributors will deliver to each building. So we definitely wanna consider delivery pickup and how that impacts us getting products or not. Um, looking at storage capabilities, you know, if we're getting something in frozen, do we have enough freezer space in all our buildings? Uh, um, dry goods, do we have enough space for that? And how long we have to store it for? Um, just making sure that the way we menu plan and what we plan to bring in, we're able to actually have the capacity to hold it. And then last, looking at staff capacity, you know, many schools right now are very short staffed um, and we have to look at, you know, the, the capacity and whether they're able to, you know, chop up potatoes, shred cabbage, you know, do we need to get it in shredded if it's available just to make it, you know, I want to say easier, but practical and possible to serve certain menu items. And then also looking at the skills. Um, one of our one of the grants we're working on right now, we're talking about having a culinary training. We actually had it planned um, for this coming summer and previously, but of course with COVID, we want it to be in person. So we're waiting uh, to have that culinary training with our staff so that they have the skills 
uh, to process some of the New York State products. Next slide, please. Uh, so finding your source, um, what our process is really to, you know, once we hear that a farmer is interested or we work with um, two partner agencies right now, Cornell Proper Extension and Food and Health Network, who help us connect with farmers and food hubs and distributors. Um, once we find our source, we usually go out and take a visit to the farm, learn about the products that they have. And of course, the sources can change depending on um, you know, what's available, what they have available and what we need. So again, just always keeping an open mind with where you might find a source um, and just having the conversation up front to figure out if it would be a good fit for schools. Next slide, please. And then after we find our source um, or what we think is available, we develop recipes. So within our group, we have a team of managers and directors who work on recipe development. Sometimes we um, pull, you know, items or menus or recipes from another district or another cookbook, or sometimes we figure out we have a product and we try to create them ourselves. Um, we really wanna make sure that the recipes are success, success. So it takes a long time for this to happen. Sometimes we only develop a couple new recipes a year. Um, so we wanna really take the time because once we develop these recipes, then we go ahead and we taste test them with students. So next slide. So we have um, taste tests we try to have for one recipe taste test in several, several of our schools to make sure um, that, you know, we're getting a wide variety of feedback from students. Um, a lot of the taste tests are fun. We try to make them interactive, fun. Um, it's also a good education lesson for students. Um, this particular taste test you're seeing here is with cabbage. And a lot of times we'll actually bring like a cabbage in because a lot of kids haven't seen the cabbage before it's processed into the food. So um, we try to show the product. Um, there was one time I was at a school and we were taste testing roasted beets and a kid came up to me and he's like, are you talking about the headphones, like the beet headphones? And I was like, no, I'm talking about an actual beet that grows in the ground. So um, we always try to have the product there and showcase it, but taste tests are really important to introducing students to the food. And then the picture on the right you see here is a new voting system. In the past, we used to um, have a voting system that was just yes or no. And we found that like, maybe that's not the best way to do a taste test. And we changed it to, I tried it, I like it, I'm not a fan of it. Because everybody does not like all foods and we just wanted to make it more positive. And it's okay if a student doesn't like something, it's more important that they actually tried it. Um, Cause a lot of times that's the hardest part is getting them to just try it. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so once we taste test the recipes and we decided that we think they're gonna be a success, um, we go ahead and we develop our menus. So this is just a snapshot of our menus for next year. Um, we do menus September through May. We usually leave June off because schools are trying to reduce their inventory, inventory before um, the summer. So um, we go through and we draft these menus. Of course, they're subject to change depending on you know, what happens with product. Um, but this really gives us a guide, the farmers and distributors who anyone who wants to bid a guide of what we're, we want to serve on the menu. So at the top, we have some items that we plan on doing all the time. Obviously not all of these can go on the geo preference bid um, as Mark explained earlier, but again, just trying to plan what we're gonna do in advance so that uh, farmers can grow product for us. Next slide, please. Okay, so now that we've, we've done all the work to get the bid created, now we gotta go we have to draft our specifications of the products that we want. So you want to do the item description. Uh, what requirements are you going to require on your bid? Uh, do you want your farm to be GAP certified? And that could be a local requirement, possibly by your county. Uh, you have to check with your county health department and see if GAP certification is a requirement or not. Um, minimally, you should be asking a farmer for a, for a food safety plan, uh, ensuring that they have a plan in place to keep the food as safe as possible all the way through the growing process and into um, the box. And um, delivery requirements. Are you requiring the, the product to be delivered to all schools, to one central location, uh, multiple locations, 
or will you be picking the product up? So you need to put in there, how's the product going to get to you? You, know, you want to specify the size. What size apple do you want? You know, what size potato? Uh, the type of apple, the type of beef. You know, do you want 85, 15 ground beef? Do you want a 90, 10? So you need to be very specific on the items that you are looking for. And the Buy American provision. Again, we talked about that as a requirement. That needs to be on your bid. And make sure that we talked about this already, but know your local policies. Um, do you have to have a liability or work with compensation for your local school or for, for local municipalities? Uh, what is your district's purchase threshold? You know, maybe if you're doing a, a one-time small purchase, you can use the micro-purchase option and you don't have to go out to bid for these products. So understand what your board policies are for the specific items that you are buying. You know, if you're only buying one item, you could do the micro purchase or maybe it's a couple of small items and it's below your district small purchase threshold. Again, maybe you don't have to go out to bid. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a good idea to go out and understand your board policies and uh, so you know which bid you have to do or your quote or micro purchase. Very helpful to have. So here's an example of, of just a, a piece out of one of our board policies. You know, basically our board policy is saying anything above $20,000 has to be bid. And then it goes down and says below 20,000, you don't need a bid. So, you know, for us, if a district is buying, you know, local corn only once, and it's only $5,000 or less even, we don't have to go out and bid. We can just do a quote for that product. Uh, so this is just right out of a board policy. And then the board policy goes even to more specific details that if it's, you're only buying $1,000 or less of that product, you don't need to make one verbal quote. And then if it's 5,000 or less, you need to try to attempt to get two verbal quotes. So again, this is very helpful uh, when developing a menu for a small district that they say, you know, I'm menu menuing corn twice. Each time I menu it, I figure it's gonna cost me about $2,000. They, they only have to go out and find two vendors and get a quote for it. So. Um, whatever's easier for you, but this is a great resource to understand what your local uh, procurement policies are at your district. Again, four fundamentals of bidding. You have to buy American. Understand all the different levels of law, your federal, state, and local regulations. Uh, open and competition, you know, so it always has to be fair and competitive when you're doing a bid process. So, you know, that way, yes, your farmers can bid the product, but also your local vendors, even your local um, produce dispenser or your produce vendor can also bid on that product as well. And you have to make sure that that uh, bidder is able to perform all the conditions in terms of your bid. If they can't, then they are not a responsible bidder and you should not be awarding that bid to them. And here's an example of our bid, um, one copy of it. You know, here's the bid that's gonna go out to the vendor. So it shows the product requested. You know, we're, we're requesting broccoli, for example. We tell them what size of the bag, you know, five pound bag minimum price per pound. It's gonna be menued um, in September. So that way they know that we need that broccoli sometime in September and how much broccoli we want total. And then all the way through. You know, so apples, you know, for the month of September, bi-weekly, uh, we need 104 cases of apples every time it's menued, uh, all the way down through. So that way the farmer has an idea of how much they, they, they need if they can make, meet those requirements. Uh, so it's very helpful. You know, when, when do we need it and how much? Two great requirements for the farmer or the vendor to make it easier for them to bid. So I did want to share, I'm going to try to share my screen, Mark, and go through our bid real quick just to show. Okay, hopefully everyone can see that. Uh, this is what we get a lot of questions on, um, is what the bid actually looks like. So this is our geo preference bid for next school year. Um, so I just kind of wanted to go through it and um, share a little bit uh, about it. So first, obviously, we have um, when the bid opening is and um, where to return the bid, some pretty general information. Um, a little bit about our program uh, we include on the bid just so that um, they can see, you know, that we're K through 12 schools and what our goals and what we're striving for. 
And then of course, um, what the geo preference credit system is. Um, we have a list of requirements on our bid and documentation that we ask about. And then again, just summarizing the geo preference information for whoever is bidding and some examples of how the bidding works. Um, so just wanted to show that. And then um, again, more questions for those that are bidding so that we can award the bid um, you know, with different percentages. And then this is a page that Mark shared about what we're bidding. So we, we are bidding product for the entire school year based on our menus. Uh, so we take anything that can go on the geo preference bid um, and add it by month and when we want it so that it's pretty clear um, when it's gonna be menued and farmers can grow what we need. I'm gonna scroll down since it's quite long. <laughs> and then um, we also have an area where maybe we're looking for some product that's not on the menu, but we wanna try some different recipes. Like right here, we're, we're bidding Brussels sprouts, butternut squash and a root vegetable medley. Uh, and some, there's some items that we've tested, but we haven't fully menued. Um, and then also vendors can write in products. We have had vendors write in products before that we've actually used because sometimes we're not aware of what's out there and they might have a product um, that is a good fit. And then we include our menus so they can see exactly when we're menuing every item. That's a few pages. Um, and then delivery logistics. So we're 15 school districts. So we include all the addresses. Can they deliver to each school district? Um, and some can deliver to, you know, different sites and some cannot. And then we'll determine, you know, based on the bid, if it's going to be possible. Uh, we do have some that deliver to like three different drop points, and then we're able to disseminate uh, to all the districts. Um, the bidder agreement, and we do include the product formulation statement, which is required. Um, which as many know, this is a challenge sometimes to get filled out, but we do require that uh, so that we're set for when we get audited. I'm going to stop sharing, but I thought that that might be useful to see the full document of um, how we do our geo preference bid. Thanks, Julie. Yeah, that's a great sample. And uh, you know, one thing I just want to you know, talk about little, really quick is Julie talked about delivering where we have three hubs. Uh, we're thrilled that uh, hopefully by August, we're going to be purchasing a refrigerated truck so that we have the option uh, to go pick up the products directly from the farm um, or just have it at one central location. Uh, we really think this is going to be a game changer for us as far as expanding uh, out to get uh, more farmers to be able to bid our bid because a lot of the farmers just can't deliver to us. So I really think this is going to be a game changer and allow more com competition and allow us to buy from more locally sourced uh, companies. So once your bid is complete, you need to advertise. Uh, you know, and we really, one thing that we're trying to do more, hopefully over the next year, is, you know, we've all done it. We just, we create the bid, we throw the newspaper, and then hope for somebody to submit the bid. Uh, really go above and beyond that. You know, first, hopefully by, by now that you've got to this point, you have a good idea of a couple of local farmers who are gonna be willing to bid on your bid. But just in case, you need to put it at least in the newspaper, but you can put it on your website, social media. If you know the farmers, you can email it to them. You know, do your district newsletters, your menus. Promote, promote, promote to any place you can to get as much competition as you can uh, to make it fair and competitive and to allow you to grow your, your farm school program to get more local programs. So definitely promote your, your bid once it's completed. Uh, once you get the bid back, you have to, um, you can award it. Uh, you know, and we talked about, this is the main advantage of a GFR preference bid. When you're awarding a bid and you're creating your bid, you can give points and preference to a local company. And you could do that either by a point comparison or discount par comparison. And it can be tiered. You know, you can do two or three different ones and have a different percentage by comparison. Um, and I'll show you more in the next slide here. So for example, here, you can do um, a 10% off within 100 miles or 7% within New York State. So here, for example, we are looking at a award 
where Protus Express uh, bid an item for the total cost of $31,000. Ray's Produce bid an item for $33,000. And SMV Distribution bid something for $34,000. Uh, Produce Express did not meet the specifications of within 100 miles, so they don't get a discount. Um, Ray's Produce, they did bid within the 100 miles, so they get um, a 10% discount. And F and V distribution, they're within New York State, but they're not within 100 miles, so they only get a 7% preference. So when you compare that and you get that preference down through, so Ray's Produce is now the winner because that total bid value when you do the discounts is 29700 which is less than the other two bidders. You're still paying the $33,000, but for awarding purposes, because you've created preferences, um, raised produce wins. So you can buy from raised produce. And again, this is just, it gives your local preference an advantage to beta buy your products local. Uh, but you have to remember, you're still paying the $33,000, not the $29,700. Uh, here's an example of just awarding with uh, pennies off. So here was their GGAP preference met. Um, yes, for Apple Lane Farms. And the other two, Owen Orchards and Zoe's Beth, uh, did not meet the GGAP preference uh, threshold. So Apple Lane got 10 cents off for Apple. So they, they got $1.95. So by the, the penny choice wise, Apple Lane won the bid and Owen's is two cents over the bid. So again, it's just a great way to help uh, give the local the local vendor a little bit of an advantage. And here's an example of the actual awards. Again, now we're just awarding the bid and what the price was uh, from what everybody bid. So, and we send this award out to the farmers. So the farmer knows uh, who won which product. So it says who, who won it and the award price. Now it's time to manage your contracts. You know, you need to go out, you need to communicate, make sure your farmer, whoever won the bid, understands that they've won the product and that they know the date that's going to be menued and that it's going to get to you in time. You have to make sure that, you know, if there's credit checks need to be done, create your purchase order. Again, we talked earlier about proof of insurance. Everything you need needs to be done before you buy that product. If you're qualified for 30%, do you have the correct paperwork? Uh, have them send you a sample of what they've done for that paperwork. So everything needs to be done, and this should all be done before you buy the product. And once the bid is awarded, you should be contacting and constantly communicating with that farmer or, or award winner to make sure they can meet the bid. Because maybe between the time that you awarded the bid and the time it's menued, maybe we had a hailstorm. Maybe there was bad weather. Maybe there's a drought. So maybe they no longer can meet those specifications, but they never told that to you. So keep in constant contact with your providers to make sure that they can continue to provide that product um, and nothing's going to stop them. So communication is always key um, with your local farmers, especially. So as Mark said, um, promoting the bid, but also promoting um, the farm to school efforts that you're doing. So we do a lot of promotions with our partners. Um, Cornell Choir Extension takes the lead on what you see here on the left, which is a new newsletter that we released this year. It's monthly. And uh, this is sent to uh, all the district PR people, all the districts I send it to. Um, it's also given to some of our local legislators. Uh, really just promoting our prog program, getting the word out about it, what we're doing each month. Uh, so we're very excited about that. Um, also, we've created some, this picture in the middle, some uh, nice uh, social media frames and uh, different promotions to promote. And the kids love taking pictures in this as well. And then also um, just our menu posters. So we're really lucky to have our farm to school partners. Uh, Food and Health Network creates a lot of these promotion materials as well. Um, and we typically have posters um, every month printed. We didn't do it this year with COVID, but every month printed and right in the cafeteria advertising the New York Thursday coming up. And uh, we also post, post on our social media pages. So again, just promote your program as much as you can. 
Um, it never hurts to repost things, reuse some of the same information because a lot of times it's just reinforcing the great work that schools are doing. Next slide, please. Uh, so I did wanna also take a minute to share a video, but um, just again, video is a great way to promote the program. We, I'll be honest, we just started doing videos this year. Um, I'm not a big fan of getting in front of the camera and a lot of others aren't, uh, but people love watching videos and it really makes it real. So um, again, just if you can do videos, um, if you're taking video of kids, just making sure that it's approved by the school district. Um, but I do wanna share a video real quick that we posted on our social media with um, one of our local farms. We went and visited uh, one of our local farms who was, um, pressing cider for one of our districts. Um, so if everyone can see that, but again, this was a great video because we have the farm farmer. We also have both of our partners there um, and just talking about the program. So I'm gonna play this real quick. Hi everyone, we're here today at Russell Farms where cider is being pressed. Uh, we're here with our farm to school partners. So we have Aaron from the Food and Health Network and Tara from Cornell Property Extension, Broome County and Mike from Russell Farms. All right. So today we are in our new cider facility. Uh, we are pressing New York State apples today. Uh, the cider we're pressing today is going to the Windsor School. Uh, so we do appreciate the business that we are getting from uh, all our New York State uh, farm, uh, schools. Great, yep, and we're thrilled to be here. Uh, love working with both these and our farm partners uh, to find more local products to get into the schools. In Cornell Cooperative Extension, we help with the nutrition education component. So we're in the schools, help teaching the students about the Farm to School products and, and all the nutrition. So again, just here at Russell Farms today, uh, promoting our Farm to School program, and we're really happy to have all our farmers on board to bring fresh year products to students in schools. So that's just one example of um, a video that can be done. We have been doing some live videos. That one had to be pre-recorded because at the farm there was no cell service. So um, just as much as you can promoting through videos. I know there's a lot of other districts across New York that have done some great videos as well. Next slide, please. Um, so again, just wanted to regroup and tie this together. But again, just receiving the local product, you know, managing your contract, making sure it's what was bid. Um, preparing it. We love to involve students if we can. Um, haven't so much this year, but in the past we would get sweet corn in and the kids would help peel it, um, which really is a great um, edu education lesson for them and also helps the cafeteria out and it's fun. Um, and then serving it on the menu um, and enjoying it. So uh, we're really proud of the work that we do. And I know a lot of other districts across the state um, are as well. And it, there's nothing better than seeing New York State products on the menus. Next slide, please. I just wanted to share some resources uh, that we found very useful when we were doing geographic preference bidding and looking at New York State products. So um, here's a great list of them. Uh, and there's some more on the next slide as well. Um, but I just wanna point out market share, like the seasonality charts, looking at what's available. Uh, that's a good place to start. And then some of our other um, you know, resources here that you might wanna check out. Next slide, please. And um, that's it for what we have on geo preference bidding. I see there are some questions in the chat. Um, here's our contact information. Uh, if you ever wanna reach out to us, I know Mark is retiring. So his email might not work after June, <laughs> um, but feel free to reach out. Uh, 